goal is freedom. And I believe we will win it right here in Atlanta. Atlanta must not fool herself any longer. We must be willing to suffer when necessary, go to jail when necessary, and even risk our lives to become witnesses to the truth as we see it. My father loved the city of Atlanta, of course, because this is where he was born. He grew up here, he was educated here. He wanted to make sure that he lived in the community where the people were. He was a product of the Atlanta streets. A lot of memories on the West Hunter Street. Pascal's Motor Hotel, a very historic gathering place for members of the Civil Rights Movement. Most of the meetings of the Civil Rights Movement were held uh, in its ballroom. The center of Hunter Street was the Atlanta University Complex. Atlanta University Center was the uh, intellectual center of black America. 1966. It was along Hunter Street, King led one of his last protests in his home city of Atlanta, demanding that Julian Bond be seated in the Georgia State Legislature. To that point, he had been denied access to his rightful seat. He was dismissed because he opposed the war in Vietnam. We are going to see that day right here in Atlanta, yeah. Georgia, when Julian Bond will be back in that state legislature. <laughs> Sad news for all of our fellow citizens and people who love peace all over the world. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. In the wake of King's assassination, uh, Atlanta, and particularly Hunter Street, became a central gathering place for the world, watching the funeral procession. I, I didn't know what to expect. I was trying to get my friend and brother comfortably in the ground. We expected it to be a crowd, but we didn't expect all of America to show up. <laughs> There's a whole lot of people gathered on that day. The street was literally solid people, as far as you could see, uh, to downtown Atlanta. Later, uh, I was surprised that they really underplayed the number of people that were there. When you watch the news reports, it usually referred to tens of thousands. And I'm sure there were several hundred thousand because you couldn't fill that much space solid without having that many. The first city that we know of that named a street for Dr. King was Chicago just months after King's assassination in 1968. When you think about Atlanta and you consider the fact that it took uh, at least eight years, one wonders why it did take so long. I was a little embarrassed that it took us as long as we did. Weich Fowler was on the Atlanta City Council during much of the debate over naming a street for Dr. King. I thought it was a wonderful idea and, and, and high time that we honored our own. Martin Luther King Street in Atlanta was formed from three older existing streets. The initial proposal and the activism behind it uh, was directed by Mr. Morris Finley, a city councilman at the time. On this side of the community, we got generals that's being honored. Gordon Drive, named after John B. Gordon, a Confederate general. On that side of the community, we got generals being honored. Mosley Drive was named for Hiram Mosley, a uh, Confederate doctor turned businessman, and Hunter Street, named for Alston Hunter Green, a prominent planter and slave owner. I want to honor black folks. And I sit down and I start looking at all the people who were my heroes and she wrote. The leader was Dr. King. Even though some people may think that naming a street is a pretty easy task or a relatively simple matter, street naming was an act of activism. It was an act of uh, going out and generating public support and dealing with public opposition. And in fact, Mr. Finley exactly found that. He actually tried to get multiple streets named for Dr. King and ran into opposition and struggle. What I wanted to do is build the entire box that we was in. I ran into problems. There was a, a general anxiety within the city of Atlanta. Personal and political rivalries going on uh, within and between the white and black communities within Atlanta about exactly how much they wanted to identify with King and exactly where best to remember him within the city. I'm sure there were some that 
did not want to have their businesses on the street named after a prominent black man. I chose a street I feel would be no opposition. Connor Street, here we go again with another one of the generals. Martin's movement was, from the very beginning, to redeem the soul of America from the triple evils of racism, war, and poverty. Old Hunter Street, going right straight through the black community, was a pathway through poverty. It may seem strange for me to say this, but I, I don't think it, that it was uh, primarily uh, a racial matter. My greatest opposition were black folks. The people who live and work and have their businesses on streets don't like change. Everybody wants to protect their own. So now I go to explain, hey, do you know this guy right here killed all these people who fought in the Civil War? Didn't make no difference. That means you got to change my stationery. They don't like to have to tell everybody that they have a new address. If you really want something, you do you know how to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. When the street was named, I thought it was very significant that it was a street that went into the downtown community. Years of, during my father's life, he could not go into that downtown area. Once it happened, it's impossible not to have a, a little ego trip whenever you go under that sign. <laughs> it was speaking about a, a new way of looking at Atlanta's history. I, too, had a dream. And I got mine in black and white. This is a man who, when he was assassinated, he was one of the most hated men in America. Now, he's one of the most loved men in the world. And that's evident by so many things. The streets that are named after him, it just happens to be one of those many ways. I take the naming of the streets of the nation after Martin Luther King as a promise. If we think putting up a sign on the street is paying tribute to this man who gave his life for this nation, the street's not worth a damn. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive is depressed. What we invested in as older people did not turn around and reinvest in us. And so you see neglected streets. The streets in almost every city go through poor neighborhoods. When a lot of cities did begin to name their streets for Martin Luther King, I think it was Chris Rock. His routine was, if somebody calls you and says, I'm lost, I'm on Martin Luther King, run! Run! It ain't the safest place to be. Dr. King didn't dream of a city that was in disrepair. So what we have envisioned in Atlanta is an ML King Drive that is befitting of Dr. King's legacy. We really need the people that we invested in to come back and invest in us and our neighborhood. It should be a source of pride for everybody. It's a reminder that we still have a lot of work to do. We need to invest a lot in transforming these communities so that they truly live up to the icon. If we take it as a promise that we should turn Martin Luther King's streets throughout our nation into avenues of hope and promise for the least of these God's children, whatever color they may be. Nothing could make Martin Luther King more proud. It's about repairing a community or repairing inequality. There is no other street like it. Yeah, I mean, it's a great piece. Uh, a real understanding of um, the cultural influence that, uh, again, as I said earlier, is being an undercurrent where the, the most prominent person for peace, the most prominent person for change uh, is, is put on the poorest neighborhood. Uh, the street signs are on the poorest neighborhood so they're not reinvested back into, from, from both communities, or all communities rather, uh, into those places, which is kind of a slap in the face to what he has done. And, um, I think that's an important message, uh, but at the same time, the awareness of that message, now what are we gonna do and how are we gonna change that?